49 and a half to the break. I guess we should go for the biggest possible first. So let's do 12s. Well, a 12 can always be turned into a 10. Yes. You know, at the end of the day, I guess well, you can't add wood. You're 12 long, you're wanting six by anyway, right? Yeah, I'm gonna go two by six on the 12 footers. And I think we're actually gonna do two by six on the 10 footers too. So okay. it'll all work out. to the break so we can do three 12s in there so there's 25 in there yep, so it 25. sounds like there's two more 12s. two more 12s yeah two 12s okay Nice. A little dirt. I'll sharpen it. Keep going. Not far enough. There you go. Less bucket, more thumb. There you go. Nice and slow. Just open the bucket. There you go. Perfect. Copy casualty. Perfect. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. Six left here. All right, and then what's the plan with this one? I think we should drag it around the corner. Okay, um, is there room to do that now? Looks like if we get that one out of here, yeah, then we may be in the money. Why don't we knock that one out real quick and then I'll maybe measure this log over here. Nice. This is not what I wanna be working on right now, but this is what we're working on right now. Uh, we've got a lot of other projects that I just feel like in my mind are screaming at me, work on me, work on me, but it's really a juggling act. A lot of this stuff that we're doing right now, we've actually neglected because we've been working on the house. In case you don't know, we're not home builders and this is not all we do. We actually have a property, we have a family, so we have a lot of things that are going on and it's very much a juggling act. We're trying to juggle those things. We had a kind of a narrow window of good weather. I have some help that's visiting, and so I kind of had to switch gears a little bit, which is hard on my mind because my brain's kind of over there in the house working on those projects, and there's still a lot of irons in the fire, and there's a lot of projects that are kind of in motion. I think that's something that's not super clear on our channel is how exactly all that stuff happens, but it's all very behind the scenes. And uh, anyway, so things are progressing on the house. We're excited to get back to work on cabinetry. This feels like a departure from that because it is, but the weather's supposed to turn bad in the next couple of days. Getting these dead trees cut down was something that's been needing to be done for quite a while and uh, it just seemed like a good time to knock it out and well it's kind of it's kind of snowballed on me I'll just be really honest it feels like it's turned into a multi-day project but you know what it's gonna feel good to have it done uh, property's gonna feel a little more tidy we still have a lot of work left to do with all these piles of branches um, we've got a wood chipper that's coming in a few days we're gonna turn that into wood chips for the garden I'm trying to be positive it sounds a little negative the positive is that this is work that needs to be done it's beautiful outside and uh, I get to enjoy this working with my sister so what we're working on today is getting these logs over to the sawmill we brought the sawmill home I uh, had a friend borrowing it there and we want to get some of this stuff turned into lumber so looking far into the future not being that like 
need it today, go down to the lumber yard and buy it today type of person. We're always trying to kind of work on that, um, that flow of products. So we're gonna be building interior walls at some point, and we also are gonna be building a false floor in the loft, and that's gonna be for plumbing and electrical uh, in the loft. So we're gonna need quite a bit of lumber for that. These trees have been standing dead here for a year and a half or so, and we were concerned that they might snap off and cause other problems. We can turn these into lumber. The interior walls are non-structural. This is pine, and so we should be able to use this stuff assuming it's in good condition, which it's not clear that it is, but if it is in good condition, we can use this for our interior walls. There's another tree that's laying up on the hillside. That one snapped off at some point in the last year. We weren't, we weren't aware of it until we walked in kind of a property assessment. That one's got some issues too, some butt rot and stuff, but I think we can buck that up and um, get that down and turn it into something useful. I wanna work on this stuff at the moment because the weather's still good, and this is an in interior project once it's turned into lumber uh, and sawmilling during the winter kind of sucks at least in the rain the sawdust gets in everything it just gets really hard to work ask me how I know I spent a month behind a wood miser in the rain because I had to because of our timber frame and it sucked so I'd rather sawmill when the weather's good and and enjoy it versus just grind it out and suck and hate life so we've got these deadfall uh, pine trees they're beetle kill um, we hopefully can get those to the sawmill today. I, I don't know if we're gonna get any sawmilling done. Seems like lately we just can't get started as early as we want to, but you know what? Again, being positive, we're working on things that are fulfilling. We're using our own resources to build our own house without incurring debt. So that, that feels really good. I'm gonna assume a video that we shot a few days ago actually got published. It's a bit controversial, so I don't, maybe we didn't publish it. Maybe after all we had second thoughts, got cold feet. But anyway, if we publish that video, if you're looking for a laugh, we did a video showing three top secret methods of felling trees, and these are the trees that we were working on. So we've got one left here. We've got to get it pulled out and bucked up. What we're doing is cutting these to 12 feet, four inches. So in the loft, the lumber, we need about 12 feet uh, because the timber frame is, is 36 by 36. Therefore, t units of 12 make a lot of sense. In the living area, uh, the tallest stud we would need is about 10 feet. So these 12 footers, we should be able to cut them down to 10 feet, no problem. Uh, but we wanna make sure that we have enough 12 foot stuff. Uh, and then hopefully we can get everything that we need and we shouldn't have to buy a single stick of lumber, which would be awesome. Normally, logs like this, you would have to let them dry if you cut them down while they're living or toward the later stages of life. They'd have a ton of water in them. But because these were dead standing, they dry out a ton and therefore, I'm hoping in leaving them standing that the lumber that we create from them is less likely to have twisting and warping and stuff. That's a whole different subject and I have a lot to learn on that matter. But I know that the green trees that we milled for our timber frame, they were cut and we turned them into a beam within 48 hours and they were a timber frame within a week. And of course those beams are very prone to movement. The joinery resists a lot of that movement but it doesn't go away. So the most ideal thing would be to work with a dry tree. Let the drying process happen while it's still in tree form. Any movement that's gonna happen, happens. And then when you go to mill it up, it's much more stable. Of course, we have kiln drying, which speeds the drying process up. But if anything, that also speeds up the warping and twisting. I'm not an expert. There's probably things you can do to mitigate that stuff. But let's just say that modern lumber at a lumber yard, when you cut the bands on it, it goes every which way like spaghetti. It doesn't look anything like lumber. It's just a mess. So we're hoping that this stuff is super dry already, and therefore it's more stable as wood. Although we do have some concerns about areas of, of rot or maybe where the wood is not solid. So we may end up losing some of the wood. I'm not really sure, but here's hoping it's all sound wood and good condition and it's dry and stable. And then if we can get it tarped and protected from the weather, if we want to use it to frame over the winter, we shouldn't be dealing with green lumber. The bluing that you see in this wood is actually caused by a bacteria that is carried by the beetle that kills these trees. That's important because just because the tree is dead doesn't mean that all the larvae and everything that, are, that was in the tree is gone. So if we mill this stuff up right away and then put it in the house right away, Way, you guessed it, we could wake up a bunch of larvae and we could have a bunch of bugs in the house. So we'd like to at least have it outside seasoning for a while, even better if it gets subjected to some really harsh cold as it might kill whatever bugs are in the wood. I 
should have been keeping track of how many logs we have. So we had six here on the ground, right? Yeah. And then we already had three on the trailer, so we're at nine. Okay, perfect. Nine 12 footers. Nine 12 footers, okay. So this one has a little bit of crock in there. It's got a little bit of bend. Just about three feet this that side of the axe. About there, yeah. Where's that at, 16? 16? 16. Yeah, I think we're deciding there's so much bend in this tree. Look at that. that we're going to cut a 10-footer, a 10-footer, and then we should be able to go to 12s after that. So I'm really glad we went for 12s on the other trees. That's for sure. footers well wow. that's pretty good all pine all pine yep um this is looking good i think we can fit more trees we're well under the gross of the trailer for sure i think each one of these probably weighs oh maybe 500 pounds times 30 so we're probably at 6,000 pounds right now and the trailer will hold 30 so i think we're good to go it's nice to come out here and see all the work you you and ann have done i'm really yeah. proud of you for doing this work i feel like it's really easy not to I think yeah. a lot of people want land, but the more land you have, the more responsibility you have. Yep. And the bigger chore list you're taking on, it takes time to manage your land well. That's work. I mean, we wanted land and we want to take care of it. It just feels like we haven't really had time. Yep. I feel like there's so many things, the garden, you know, the house, you know, there's so many things to do. So I guess it's all a juggling act, like I said earlier in the video, that we've got so many irons in the fire and you can neglect them for so long but eventually you've got to deal with them so this is nice i feel like this is going to feel good having this done before winter yep. um, we're going to get a lot of wood out of it we're going to get some firewood out of it so it's full of lots of good things if there's one word i would use to describe me it would not be logger but we're doing an okay job we're getting the wood out of the forest and we're getting them cut to links that we can use and we're maximizing all the tools that we have. So it feels really good. I actually remember doing this with Alyssa a long time ago <laughs> when we first started cutting trees on the property for the timber frame. Right over there, we had our four wheeler and a chainsaw. Go! It's a miracle we're still together. <laughs> yeah, we did end up having to rent equipment to move those. We had a workshop early on when we first received our sawmill. We actually invited guests to come to the property and uh, experience the delivery with us, which was really fun. We got to all put it together. Everybody got to take a cut and I think everybody kind of was a little less intimidated by the sawmill when it was all over. Uh, but getting the trees that we originally cut out from over here over to the sawmill was very difficult. If you haven't seen the video we just did uh, talking about which sawmill is better, the chain sawmill or the band sawmill, give that a watch. 
I think had we not been able to get equipment, we would have been stuck to using a chainsaw mill because there's no way we were gonna bring the sawmill over here and get it set up in there to mill these logs. Uh, but thankfully we got equipment, we used the neighbor's trailer and uh, we loaded it way too heavy and I think we moved four logs. That gives you some idea how many logs are on this trailer. I will tell you that logs are heavy as this water is heavy and that's because there's water in the logs. So it was a lot of fun uh, working on trees over here with Alyssa. Um, we, we had some experiences, I'll just say that. Hey. Oh. But we're a much more educated and we're much more efficient at what we do now. And so this process is going really well. I feel like we have the right tools. We've done it safely, except for the one tree that we dropped, trying to set a world record of dropping more than one tree with one cut. And uh, it actually is really fun now. I can say that the early days were a lot of work and full of a tremendous amount of frustration just because we didn't have the tools. And I'll be honest, we didn't have much experience either. Ready to go for the beast. Okie doke. the winch and four-wheeler. Ha! Not, <laughs> you're not taking that out of there with a four-wheeler to winch. Well, you could, That's but why it's still there. Hold my beer, watch this. Right? Yep. I'll tell you one thing, we have got our 50 bucks out of this chain. All wow. 50 bucks we dropped on this thing at Home Depot when is we that first. Our original this chain? is the first chain we ever bought. It used to be gold. Paid real money. Yeah, it was, <laughs> paid real money for this chain. It has pulled its fair share of trees. So I feel good about this investment. It was very well done. And then that looks like beautiful firewood. What are we gonna get out of this guy? 12, four for sure. Do we have 20? No. It's not, not even, so we'll get a 12 footer. Watch yourself.
Good, drop it. Those are good. Their oil, like that. Coffee out of the way. Toolbox. Perfect. Dismount. Um, I'll give that a four. Yeah. There's a four for dismount. Well, there it is. There's our day's work. Not a bad haul. Two things. One, it gives me more appreciation for the people who do this for a living. <laughs> we obviously are not professional loggers. But boy, it's a lot of work. Of course, they use a lot of machinery now, but uh, it's a lot of work. I'll say that. What a haul. So yeah, didn't even come close to getting done today what I wanted or thought we would get done. Guess that just goes with having no clue what's going on. So we've got all the trees, we've got them all bucked up. They're pulled out of there, the brush is cleaned up. That feels really good. Um, it was a good day, it was a beautiful day. I don't think we could have picked a better day to do this stuff, but. So we need to saw this all up. I actually thought we'd get that done today. I really did. I don't know what I was thinking. I was totally wrong. But we've got it over here, we've got the sawmill. So I think now we're kind of set up to start making this stuff into usable lumber. I think days like today are just a good reminder of why we came here and why we're living the lifestyle that we are. I remember when we first arrived, we had the cabin, barely, had a wood stove, barely, living in the RV, and just going out on our property and doing maintenance. We still have a lot of maintenance to do. We've got overgrowth, crowding, um, we've got some other trees that need to be serviced, maintained, but this just feels good. I don't know, there's something that makes the, makes the food at dinner taste better. I think it's good for the soul. I think sometimes when we work on the house too much, there's actually such a thing, and you kind of, I don't know, you just kind of lose your passion, you lose your energy, and sometimes a little change of pace is good. You get outside, make some sawdust, run the chainsaw, I don't know, get some dirty boogers, you know, whatever it is. It kind of gives you a new energy. And maybe there's some lesson there, I don't know. Maybe when we're all done with this project, we'll look back and think that, you know, maybe having that kind of integration with life was a good idea. And today kind of felt like that. It was a good refreshing break. Alyssa's got dinner ready. It's gonna taste really good. Milling up these logs into lumber and using them to build our house, it's also gonna feel good. So I think in all, pretty stinking good day.